I have a theory about melee players, and it might sound kind of strange. At their core, I really believe melee players are loners. Ask yourself, why do most of us choose to play a four player game with just one other person? While you think about it, I should remind you that doubles is the only competitive form of melee that lets you play the game a little closer to how it was probably intended, with three other people. It can be pretty fun, but most of us don't take doubles too seriously. Honestly, I've never been crazy about doubles myself. Still, I keep returning to one of my favorite melee sets of all time, Hungrybox and Crunch versus PPMD and Lazer at Bad Moon Rising 2. It's not exactly super major stakes, but let me ask you something. What if you didn't play melee for yourself? What if you were mostly there to help a friend? What if melee didn't have to be so lonely? PPMD and Hungrybox are two longtime members of the Five Gods of Melee. The Five Gods of Melee refers to the five players of... <sighs> you know this. If you don't know and you're watching this video, it doesn't really matter. Hungrybox is really good at melee. PP was really good, but ran into some personal health issues and had to take a break. Bad Moon Rising 2 is his first tournament in 16 months, and he's only entering doubles for now. Frankly, no one knows if he's still got it. Why don't I tell you about his teammate? What's your name? Brian Adam Jones. Where are you from, Brian? Um, North Carolina. What was your strategy for winning tonight? Hey, man, I just got to pick the best character and just use the best I can, man. This, it's all about speed. Speed kills, man. To most people, Lazar is simply PeePee's friend. He's not a bad player in singles. When PeePee started playing, Lazar was happy to help him learn. At least for a little bit. As you might imagine, PP started beating Lazar, and before anyone knew it, he's farming all of North Carolina. Ever hear of Money Mike, former top 100 player? Pretty good, right? Not exactly your average Joe. When PP plays Money Mike for the first time, Money Mike quickly realizes something so demoralizing, it's kind of liberating. He's never gonna beat PP. He isn't just losing to his Falco, he's getting destroyed by PP's Marth, his Fox, his Falcon, his Mario, basically everyone across the cast. Lazar watches PP son good players like Money Mike. He takes note of PP's unusual dedication to the game, seeing PP ascend to the top of the community, and he even watches him travel all the way to Norway to settle the score with some Swedish guy. It's the kind of singular obsession with competitive melee that Lazar doesn't have, nor does he want to have. As far as he's concerned, melee's something to do with your friends over a few beers. Unlike PP, Lazar doesn't have any national accomplishments in singles, because playing melee was never about himself. In doubles, it's a completely different story. For three years, Team Catfish would be one of the top melee teams in the world. It's not just because of PP either. Lazar consistently holds his own against world-class players. They'd go in preparing for PP, but make no mistake, they'd lose to Lazar. The only reason he seems so average is because of the guy sitting next to him. A long time ago, Crunch wasn't too different from Lazar. He'd been ranked both in New England and in Central Florida, which aren't exactly easy feats. But Hungrybox is Hungrybox. Is there anything else to say? The two grew up about 15 minutes from each other, and they've played melee together for more than a decade. Hungrybox took competing way more seriously than Crunch, but as of lately, Crunch has been doing some work himself as Hungrybox's official Team Liquid sponsored coach. Wait a minute, can a player who isn't even top 100 make that big of a difference? Once upon a time, Hungrybox looked hopeless. He couldn't touch Mango. He's losing most of his sets against Leffen. Armada's new Fox is beating him up, and it's not even a surprise when Hungrybox loses to Lucky. It's so bad that he wants to quit. So here comes Crunch, 
a guy who's originally trying to cheer up a friend who's in a bit of a slump. Clearly, something needed to change. Turns out that advice from a friend is sometimes all you need. Crunch studies Hungrybox's sets from every tournament, spending sleepless nights coming up with game plans for each of his friend's greatest rivals. He points out specific gameplay situations that Hungrybox never optimized in the past, and labs the shit out of them. Crunch is the mad scientist, the man behind a horrifying, monstrous new creation, Clutchbox. Evo rolls around, and Crunch gets 129. It's a terrible performance for him, but you think he cares? He's busy pulling off something else. This is big. He recovers. Oh, oh, the tournament winner. So how does it feel that Hungry Box is now on top? <laughs> unbelievable, man. Really unbelievable. I mean, we started this journey a year and a half after he got rocked at CEO. He's taking lessons to Professor Pro and everything. He's like, I don't think Puff can do it. I don't think it's possible to win a major with Puff anymore. And I'm like, nah, dude. Let's figure this shit out. At the end of the day, Crunch is the biggest reason that the guy sitting next to him is the best player in the country. Both teams got here as expected, more or less. Team Catfish is still good, but they're well out of their prime, having been knocked into losers by Cobal and Discid Boogie. Similarly, Team Liquid had only lost to Plup and Drug Fox in a tight five-game set. For Crunch, this set is a chance to prove that he can hang with the big boys in the game, not just coach his friend from afar. Sure, it's not in singles, but it would still mean a lot for Crunch to do well with Hungrybox here. For Lazar, this is supposed to be his last big tournament ever, a final blaze of glory with a dear friend he convinced to show up at the last second. Most people at home are watching this event to see how PP looks in doubles, but so many in the venue are there in support of Lazar, a longtime local hero and friend of many in the state scene. So, which team will move forward? Let's dive in. Team Liquid has one goal throughout this set. Let Hungrybox cook some catfish. He's the best player in the country and everyone else on the screen is not. It doesn't have to get much deeper than that. See Crunch over here? He knows that Hungrybox is better than PeePee -Pee right now and way better than Lazar, so he can bully them nonstop. In the meantime, Crunch is going to stay out of the way and pick his spots. Well, my work is done here. Done. You didn't do anything. <laughs> didn't I? Team Catfish does not have the best player in the country, so their win condition's a little trickier. PP and Lazar have better chemistry than Hungry Boxing Crunch. They've played championship doubles for years, but it's been a while. They haven't practiced for this event at all. Good to see. Oh man! Oh man! Oh, I, I, I think Alicia was bad, actually. Alicia was bad. As the match continues, PeePee -Pee and Lazar start to warm up. Crunch gets hit by Lazar a few times before running away. He tries to start something on PeePee, -Pee, but messes up, gets reversal instead. After a few more seconds, PeePee -Pee sets up Crunch for the first team's combo of the set. He oh, oh, oh my geez. god! No like way! It looks like Lazar was expecting PeePee -Pee to back air Hungrybox toward him for an up air, while PeePee -Pee was anticipating Lazar to get underneath him. Okay, they're not totally warmed up. A little bit later in the match, PeePee -Pee gets caught in a scramble, but Lazar saves him, before sneaking in a critical up smash to take Hungrybox's third stock of the game. Unlike last time too, Lazar and PeePee -Pee convert the quick 2v1 against Crunch. Momentum is now completely in their favor. But then something awful happens. They get scared, and we know why. Yes! Yes, motherfucker! Yes! Fuck with me! 
they have entered the clutch box zone. Come on, let's just oh. let PP and Hungry Box fight one v one real quick. No way. <laughs> I know what happened, man. Oh, that was such a good offer by Lazer. Oh, that was such a good attempt. This is where Lazer Soul leaves his body. PP tells him to chill out, and Lazer runs to the center of the stage and lasers. He's terrified of blowing the game for his friend. PP gets dragged to oblivion, and he runs to the edge of the stage and up smashes. It misses. All he could really do was watch. This is where PP's soul leaves his body. Because even if he isn't an active competitor, PP will never, ever forget what it's like to fight in the clutch box zone. And right now, his friend who has never made the top 100 has to somehow fend off the reigning EVO champion all alone in the clutch box zone. Lazar runs across the stage and gets a grab. Up throw up air, the puff slayer, will he hit it? Of course not, he's out of the percent range where it works on anybody conscious. Lazar then runs at a random spot on the ground and up smashes, it misses. He frantically knocks clutch box to the corner of the stage and does what looks like a flub wave dash. But in reality, the clutch box zone is activated in the physical world. Lazar's R button has jammed. What you're watching right now is Lazar inexplicably, intentionally doing a button check right in front of Clutch Box. This is the melee equivalent of trying to wiggle your boxing glove back on while Mike Tyson walks towards you. Clutch Box gets the grab, it's over. He accidentally back throws, now up the arrest. Lazar can't believe he's alive. Hungrybox is flubbing, but Lazar's outright playing hope melee. Look at Jigglypuff. Right here. This sub smash can't work. No chance. There's no timeline where this one hits. Imagine all of the places Jigglypuff can go on the screen. Anywhere. It's unbelievable that Clutchbox could ever get hit by this. You would have to take pity on Lazar to get hit by this. Maybe it's crazy, but I think you'd have to choose to lose. Oh my god! Holy crap! PP popping off! And this whole venue is going crazy right now! How did he what how did he know? I don't know. Doubles is a two-way street. Not only do you have to depend on someone else, but they have to depend on you. It only takes a couple tiny slips or a few seconds for a doubles match to get out of hand. Take a look at Crunch here. It's not looking good for him, and when Lazar shines him off stage, Crunch misinputs a fastball drill, diving to his doom. If Crunch had done this in singles, it would have only hurt himself. But in doubles, this costs Hungrybox another stock. Perhaps noting his partner's shaky play, Hungrybox starts playing more passively. Sitting in center stage, covering movement inward, rather than proactively contesting PP or Lazar in the corner. I might be projecting here, but this could be Hungrybox's way of telling Crunch to step it up. Crunch takes the hint. In the next 1v2, he knocks Lazar off the stage and holds off PP. This could have honestly ended up much worse. Nice work, Crunch. Another critical moment. When Crunch loses his next stop, watch Lazar and PP, who have about two seconds to bully Hungrybox. PP spaces too closely and Lazar hesitates. They don't have enough time before Crunch gets back and disrupts the situation. Hungrybox escapes with stock intact. The game continues and Hungrybox off a new stock sneaks an up air arrest on Lazar, but PP showing excellent awareness or maybe getting lucky while hitting Crunch, either way, saves Lazar from losing his stock. Everything looks good for Team Catfish, but Lazar realizes something. In the middle of the match, his R button breaks again. PP wonders what the hell Lazar is doing, and the distraction is enough for Crunch to beat him straight up. For his part, Lazar gets cornered by Hungrybox and loses his stock too. Team Catfish responds with a quick reversal on Crunch by Lazar and beautiful team spacing against Hungrybox offstage. Look at this coverage! Looks like they're going up 2-0. But remember, all it takes to go from being the hometown heroes to throwing it all away are a couple tiny slips, like accidentally holding in. Or that familiar fastball drill out of shine. 
It only takes a few seconds. Lazar pleads his case to his friend. Pee says, that's not good, and asks him if he needs a new controller. With the fate of their tournament run on the line, Lazar makes the most old school melee choice possible. He thinks about it for a few seconds, says, nah, and the two move on to game three. There's a sports saying, the scoreboard doesn't lie. For you gamers out there, this translates to no johns. The real truth is more complicated. I think it's easy to be a Monday morning quarterback, watching this set years later with pause, slow-mo, and rewind. But frankly, it's not even easy to commentate doubles, let alone play it, with perfect awareness of all four players. In the heat of battle, there's no order or justice. Sometimes, even the scoreboard flies right to your face. Just watch Crunch hit Pee, Pee here. If this were singles, Crunch would be fine. But Pee Pee's clearly been doing his defensive homework. He's instantly ready with the slide off downer right in Hungry Box, and Lazar's ready for the up smash. Was this a mistake by Crunch? In hindsight, sure, but do we really expect him not to hit the opponent here? That's doubles for you. For doing what any other player would have done, Crunch's reward is getting dunked on. What is going on, Lazar? Please. <gasps> oh, oh my god. Okay, no, okay. They're both alive! Oh my god. They both win! How? What the heck? This sequence starts so cool, but it ends in disaster because as Pee Pee tries to edge guard with the lasers, Lazar tries to edge guard two and runs right into him. Even after the huge offstage scuffle, they both live. Nobody learns anything. Remember Team Catfish's missed combo on Hungrybox from game one? Let's see if they're ready this time. Oof, right into Pee Pee's down air. Make that 0 for 2. Later on, Pee Pee's handling Crunch on the right side of the stage, and Lazar baits Hungrybox into another up smash. They almost get Crunch too, but another edge guard miscue. Team Liquid can't seem to finish off stock, so it's time for Hungrybox to dust off the singles playbook and start spamming grab in place. It looks silly, but he does catch both of them. In singles, this would be perfect, but in doubles, it's not gonna cut it. Crunch has watched his partner get obliterated throughout this game, but he knows it isn't as bad as it looks. He turtles up in the rock transformation and finally gets rid of Peepee's first stock. As Hungrybox isos Lazar on the other side of the stage, suddenly a lopsided match looks so much more doable than it did 20 seconds ago. Right about here, Lazar and Peepee clean up both players to set up the final 2v1. This is a horrible mistake which may have thrown the game and maybe the whole set away. Okay, okay, fine, definitely Monday morning quarterbacking here. I'm a little ashamed I wrote that, but think about it. Remember, when you run out of stocks and smash teams, you can steal one from your teammate as long as they have two or more left. If you kill Hungrybox here, he can come back at 0% with Crunch's leftover stock. Up smash Crunch here, and Hungrybox is stranded with one stock at KO percent. Wait, would that kill? Without looking it up, do you know when Fox's up smash kills Fox on Stadium? It turns out if Crunch holds full left and up smash is slightly stale. It's an absurdly borderline call. If we set this up, turns out with perfect DI, Crunch lives. 2% higher, he dies. With no time to think about it, Lazar may have instinctively made the right call. Fine but you could also neutral air Hungrybox here. He'd have to float back slowly, and you can probably kill Crunch in the meantime, same outcome. Okay, sure, but in the heat of battle, is it really fair to expect Lazar not to up smash Hungrybox here? Hey, why isn't Hungrybox taking the stock yet? Basically, after you die, you press the start button to steal, but you have to wait a little bit, especially if pause is on. Too early, and that's a stock forfeit for interrupting the game. So, how long do you have to wait? I couldn't find an answer anywhere besides the bro science handed down to me by old school smashers. You know, wait until the announcer says, player two defeated. Turns out, it depends on how you die. If you fall off the side or off the bottom, it's 60 more frames before you can steal. One second on the dot. The announcer starts on frame 50, so technically that'd be too early. I told my old school friends and they call me a nerd and 
fair. What about the way Hungrybox is going here? Turns out it's RNG dependent. According to save state, when you're KO'd vertically, an eighth of the time you hit the screen. Otherwise, you blast off into a star KO, which takes longer. Hungrybox is getting the team rocket treatment here, which means he'll have to wait three seconds until he can steal. Not exactly, but almost. Three agonizing seconds where Crunch has to stay alive. He didn't. Hungrybox can't steal, right? Look closer. Crunch still has the stock. See, if Lazar and Peepee had sent Crunch off the side or the bottom, he'd lose that stock instantly and there'd be no steal. But because it was off the top, we roll the dice again. The screen KO, Crunch dies on frame 93 after he leaves the stage. Star KO, 131. It's another star KO. There's a timeline where Lazar up smashes Crunch first and Crunch doesn't DI perfectly. There's a timeline where Lazar nares Hungrybox away and then they take Crunch out. There's a timeline where Crunch dies slightly earlier and gets screen KO'd and Hungrybox gets locked out of the steal. There's a timeline where Hungrybox mashes start and stops after seeing Crunch lose the stock. That's not this timeline. With his last second of life, Crunch instantly understands what to do. He tells his best friend to take his stock. That's doubles for you. For doing what any other player would have done, Lazar is rewarded with another trip to the clutch box zone. Oh no! No! Oh! What? PB versus Hungrybox! This is the moment everyone in the venue has been waiting for. It's finally God versus God. A rare chance to see PPMD, a returning legend of the game who hasn't played in over a year, show the world what he's got against the first national rival he ever had. I looked up the last time PP beat Hungrybox in singles before this moment. I originally thought it was EVO 2014, but then I remembered that this happened. Dude, my heart is racing. Can you imagine how these two players are feeling right now? Yeah. Oh! Oh my That's god! It. PBMD in the loser's bracket! Hungrybox, Hungrybox is not out. on camera anymore! He ran away! Yeah, either he's it seems like he's either below it or above oh it. Oh my god! Like, and he's a wizard! In reality, you have to go back to tipped off nine grand finals. December 15th, 2013. Wow. That was just about seven years ago. Whoa. Okay, so back to the set. Hungrybox just has to make it back to the stage. Jigglypuff can easily do this. It's not a crazy ask. Hungrybox kind of blew game one against Lawser, but let's get real. PP needs some kind of miracle. Oh, yes! No! He just no! go! Oh, my God! So clutch! We haven't seen the two face off 1v1 since. We probably won't for a very long time. There is an ugly secret to teams that you've probably noticed throughout this set. In fact, it's critical for Team Liquid's one-step game plan of letting Hungrybox cook. The secret is that doubles isn't actually about glory. Before anything else, it's about not dying. PB's fired up from the ending of the last game, and it shows. What is going on? <laughs> it's not done! No way. PP looks like his old self. He wants blood. Eventually, PP beats up Crunch, but he notices laws are in danger, so he target switches to Hungrybox. Both Lazar and Hungrybox lose their stock, but not every stock is made equal. This is a great trade for Team Catfish, and it's because Hungrybox died. Hungrybox wants blood too. He tries to up the arrest PP, but Lazar saves him. Lazar gets arrested shortly afterwards, but he survives it and Puff sleeps through the 2v1. There's a lot of great teamwork from PP and Lazar here, but sometimes you have to know when not to chase. PP notices Lazar in a vulnerable spot, and just like last time, he target switches to save his teammate, but Crunch sneaks in a tricky nair. If PP had just been more selfish, it could have worked out better. Crunch gets cornered and Hungrybox goes to break up the chaos, only to get hit by Crunch and a Lazar's finisher. Amazingly, Crunch survives the 2v1, but let's not mince words here. It was Hungrybox who was punished for trying to be a good teammate, and it was Crunch who got him punished and finished him off by accident. 
holy moly, look how fast PP sees the up smash send Crunch back down from the invisible ceiling glitch and combos off it. Unreal. Eventually, PP and Laws are trapped Hungrybox on the left platform. Momentum's completely in their favor. Focus on these next 10 seconds. What's the most important thing that happens? I bet you won't notice. Stop! <laughs> well, you probably saw Hungrybox in the Avatar state. Even he can't believe he found the double. So let's talk about the true hero of those 10 seconds because it's not Hungrybox. It's Crunch. This is not a good situation. Team Liquid is behind, and there's a good chance that Crunch is about to get posterized again by an on-fire PP and Lazer in front of a howling North Carolina crowd. So what will Crunch do? He does a roll to the left that's so bad, but that's why it's good. Crunch achieves his great escape. He has successfully not died. The glory naturally follows. Hold my, hold my bleep. At any thousand we do, it's PP though. No okay, sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah. With that decisive close out of game four, Team Liquid is firing on all cylinders. They're smoother than they were at the set start, and they're ready to end the hometown hype. Right out of the gate, they rest PP and almost wipe out Lazar, poised to run away with the match. On the other hand, it's been a long day for PP, and that last loss took a lot out of him. This is high-intensity, hyper-aware doubles, and it's hard to say how much he has left in the tank. Even when Team Catfish has the upper hand, they can't take advantage like they did earlier. Right here, PP starts comboing Hungrybox, but can't finish, and Lazar is getting tired of chasing Crunch around the stage. The North Carolina boys aren't done for yet, but right now Hungrybox is bullying Lazar and PP can't help, or bully Crunch enough to keep up. At this point, Team Catfish needs a surge of energy. Lazar, maybe sensing this, starts doing what he does best. It's not really working out. At one point, Lazar and PP run into each other and both get sent to their doom. Eventually, Team Catfish makes another deadly mistake. Hungrybox isn't tired in the least. This is where he consistently thrives. There is no chance he is going to let this slip out of his hands. And he doesn't. But PP gets saved by an up air. By Crunch. Given new life, Lazar finishes off Hungrybox's stock before Crunch can do anything. But a couple seconds later, another miscue and Team Catfish is down to their last stock apiece. Sucks. That's not good. Oh my god! Oh, that's not good though! Uh -oh. What's PP telling Lazar here? To this day, countless smashers pour over the archives of PP's every written treatise on melee for deep, ancient knowledge of the one true neutral game. But really, right now, he's just yelling one simple thing over and over again Kill Crunch. Lazar? A true friend, and on what might be the last stock he and his lifelong Smash partner ever play together, listens to every word. Kill Crunch. Kill Crunch. They need to get like a really clean kill. There we go. There's one. Oh, oh my god! god! No Nine way! Nine games! Nine games! Game five at DMR2. No way! Oh my god. What oh my god. Oh! Right there, right there. Lazar going to town on front. Oh my god! No! Oh my god! Oh, you can be! There's communication there. Oh my god! He's there! He got it! And that'll be it! He's storming the team! The and Lazar are heading to loser semifinals. I cannot believe What an ending. What a huge set. PP and Lazar would go on to win the tournament and start touring the country again. Hungrybox would dump Mewtwo King to do the same with Crunch. Crunch and Lazar both make the next top 100. The two teams make it to winners and grand finals of season two of the Fuse Double Circuit, competing for the $50,000 pop bonus in a legendary Game 15 Slugfest. Doubles is bigger than ever. PP beats his fatigue, sees that he still got it, and loves competition. 
everyone's childhood pet comes back from the farm upstate. And, eh, no. That's not what happens. Look, Team Catfish would lose the very next set to the same team that beat him in the winner's bracket, and afterwards they would never team together again. Meanwhile, Team Liquid would compete again a few weeks later at DreamHack Atlanta, having their best doubles performance ever at third place. But the last time Crunch and Hungrybox teamed at a major was two years ago, a disappointing 25th at Smash and Splash 4. In the long run, this set proved nothing about doubles. It was simply a moment in time for a format of Melee which, as of this video, is debatably dead. On the plus side, Lazar sent off into retirement with a community award. North Carolina Melee Lifetime Achievement Award. And congratulations to Lazar. Congratulations to Lazar. Seriously, guys, have you ever met Lazar? He's the nicest human being. Yeah, on he's Earth. an incredible guy. He is really so is. great. He is so funny. It is such a shame to see him go, but it was a blast. Of course, like most retired Smashers, he starts entering locals again every now and then. Sometimes he wins. Sometimes he's home before top eight. In true fashion to his relationship with Melee, Lazar is all over the place. But he's also got better things to do. He's married, has a kid, and Smash, for all intents and purposes, is in the box in the attic with his childhood glory days. He's accomplished more than 99% of people who've picked up a GameCube controller ever will. As for his friend, PP hasn't made it back to competing or practicing against top players yet, and I don't know when or if he ever will. But several times a week he's streaming on Twitch to a huge audience and sometimes playing Melee with them on Slippy. They're waiting like we all are for the second coming, but mostly they're just happy to see that he's happy. Crunch still hasn't made the top 100, although it's not because of a lack of effort. Before in-person events stopped, he'd grind the major circuit, oscillating from scoring big wins to not making top 64. As it turns out, balancing being a professional coach and a serious competitor is pretty difficult. At the very least, he's the most successful melee coach of all time, and shaped the metagame through Hungrybox's three years at the pinnacle of the game. Speaking of Hungrybox, he's really not doing too hot as a melee competitor right now, at least not for our standards. But something tells me we haven't seen the last of Crunch's guidance and the clutch box zone. And if we have, the funny thing is, his streams are absolutely popping off, even when he loses. Especially when he loses. What most melee players want is pretty straightforward, self-validation. It's easier to look out for yourself than it is to worry about another person. That's why doubles is so scary, because the only greater fear than failing ourselves is letting someone else down and being left alone. But none of us can do it by ourselves. No set proves this more than Team Liquid versus Team Catfish, a fascinating display of the most social and yet most forgotten format of competitive melee. This set is a shining example of how even the most successful individuals in our community wouldn't be where they are without the help of a friend. It's easy to question your faith when you only view melee through the lens of individual competition, but truthfully, the game and the people who play it have a way of keeping you around. Maybe also a way of sticking in the back of your mind as you prepare yourself to return on your own terms when you're fully ready. Perhaps you discover your happiness in helping a lifelong companion achieve their goals. Or you found another passion, but still find joy in what feels familiar. No matter who you are and what you're looking for, it's never too late to start playing Melee, and it's never too late to come back. The game will always be there, and so will the people who fight tooth and nail for it, who believe in what Melee could be, who believe in each other. Even in a game of loneliness, everyone needs a friend. <laughs>